Now, here's the important thing that I wanna talk about. Comparable sales are crucial to look at when you are going over the asking price because you still want it to appraise for the value you're under contract for, even if you are waiving your pre Hey everyone, I'm Caitlin McCagg. I am a real estate broker here in Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you for coming to my channel and checking out this video. I'm back with another episode. This is episode three of Tales from the Trenches where I share a story that just happened to me with a client so that you guys can understand what's really going on in the Phoenix real estate market. So appreciate you all following, supporting my channel and watching these videos. It seems like I'm coming to you from my car a lot more often these days. So I hope you don't mind the background, but I do what I got to do to get these videos out there for all of you. So uh, before we jump in, I just want to say if it's your first time to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I post a couple videos a week all about living in Phoenix and Phoenix real estate. And if you have any questions, you can always reach me by call, text, or email. My info's in the description below, as well as a link to set up a time to chat with me. Also, if you're on social media, follow me there. I post a lot of great stuff to keep you updated there as well. So, all right, that's it. Let's jump in. Let's talk about this week's Tale from the Trenches. This week I'm talking about the buyer side. I was recently representing a buyer in a purchase in the Scottsdale area. The price of the home was in the low 600s and it had been listed for a few days. The house was pretty much fully remodeled, uh, looking pretty nice. Uh, some things that could have been updated, but it was recently remodeled and updated. Uh, great backyard, beautiful home, and my clients were interested in it, and we didn't make a move for a few days. So that's the first thing I wanna mention. This house did sit for like five days before we came in to write an offer, and of course, by the time we wrote our offer, they already had three other offers on the table. That's just the way it always works. So we needed to be competitive. We needed to think about how we could make this advantageous to the seller to accept our offer instead of accepting the ones that they had already reviewed. For context, by the time we were getting our offer in, uh, they had already had the three offers on the table. They were going to be reviewing that afternoon and making a decision by the end of the day. So we were the last ones in the mix and sounds like they had already made somewhat of a decision. So the good news is we flew in and we swooped it up. Good news for my clients, sad news for the people that were already in the mix. I'm sorry. That's just the way that it goes sometimes. But Here's the important part. What we were able to do to get this offer accepted, first of all, I asked questions. How many offers are on the table? What do they look like? Is there anything that we can do to make our offer stand out more than the others? Now, the listing agent can't always give me all the detail, but I try to get everything possible that I can. With that information, we crafted an offer where my clients decided to uh, go above the asking price by $10,000 and waive their appraisal contingency. We also shortened the inspection time frame because we knew we could get an inspector in there right away anyway, so we made our inspection period seven days instead of 10. One of the main reasons why our offer was accepted was because we waived the appraisal contingency and we came in so much higher than the listing price. Now, here's the important thing that I wanna talk about. Comparable sales are crucial to look at when you are going over the asking price because you still want it to appraise for the value you're under contract for. Even if you are waiving your appraisal contingency, you want to minimize your risk. So that's one thing that we did is we looked at recent comparable sales in the neighborhood to get a really good gauge of where the house would potentially appraise at. And the best part of this story is that the home appraised 
right on the money of the number we're under contract for. So even though my clients went in $10,000 over the asking price and were prepared for the risk of a low appraisal, we nailed it with the number that we went in on. So all in all, this was a really, really great transaction. We were able to swoop in and pick up the house when we weren't even considered uh, minutes before. So we were able to get in and get our offer accepted. We also wrote a competitive offer. We got all the insights and intel that we could ahead of time. We were able to write competitive things into the offer and also manage my client's risk as well. And we made a very calculated decision because at the end of the day, the appraisal came in where we hoped for it to be. So that's my story on the buyer side. Moral of the story is you have to be competitive in this market. And even though sometimes things may feel uncomfortable, it doesn't mean that they're going to blow up into a huge fiery mess of disaster. There are ways that we can manage risk and make sure that the competitive offer that you're writing is also um, going to work out for you in the end as best as possible. So that's my story on that. And if you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out. Let me know what you think about these tales from the trenches. Comment below. Are they helping? Are they interesting? Do you want to hear more stories? Um, I'd love to know your thoughts and feedback on that. So don't be shy. Put a comment down below. Before I leave, let's talk about our dog of the week. Every week I talk about an adoptable rescue dog that is here at a local animal shelter in Phoenix in hopes that we can give them a bit more exposure and get them adopted. And this week I'm talking about a dog that's from the Halo Animal Rescue. Her name is Diego and she's so cute. I say it every week. Every dog is cute. I'm sorry. I can't not say that they're cute. And Diego is super cute. She is a German Shepherd mix. She's about five years old. So she's a little bit older than a lot of the ages of dogs that you see, but she's not quite yet a senior. And she's looking for an active home and she's good with other pets. It sounds like she's pretty easy going. I don't know why she's still there. So check out Diego. I have her bio linked in my description. If she could be a good fit for you, go for it. If not, share her information so that we can get her adopted. All right, guys, that's all I've got this week. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, want to reach out, call, text, or email, click the link in the description below to set up a time to chat, whatever works for you. And let me know what you think about Tales from the Trenches. Hope everyone has a great week and I will be back next week with some more videos for you. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Caitlin McKegg with HomeSmart.